Times are hard for most of us. I haven't signed off. But it's even worse for those who haven't got jobs and are skint. Ah, oh, I'm paid. I'm paid. Perhaps you don't see it, but it's there in every town across Britain. My fridge and my freezer is empty. Two tins of soup, and that's about it. The town's hardest hit are the ones that have lost their old industries. In Grimsby, the fishing days were the glory days. It was just party, party, party time. All the time, everyone was happy, everyone had money. That was a living man. A brothel in every port. <laughs> Worst hit's been the East Marsh, where the fishermen lived. Where the fuck's the parents? There is no work. There is no work. It's left the young fighting for jobs. Everyone is doing something to make a bit of extra cash. And when work leaves, other things flood in. You have a brown bread six feet under you, yeah? or you've got a fucking jail sentence hanging over your head. Get ready for it! But here in Grimsby, they're used to stormy seas. It takes a lot to pull them under. No matter how hard life gets, you've still got to try, try, try. Water bills, water falls out of the sky, should be free of charge. Look at the lovely suds. <laughs> And it's in the toughest of times that people show their greatest strengths. Fucking hell, babe. You didn't have to rob half the entire fucking forest. Don't disrespect the fucking Queen. We're bloody English, aren't we? God save the Queen! Even when they're skint. In Grimsby's heyday, its fishermen were known as three-day millionaires. One day they were loaded, the next they were skint. But it's not just fishermen who spend as fast as they earn. All over the country, people are struggling to keep their heads above water. But perhaps the East Marsh of Grimsby struggles more than most. Thursday, payday. Um, not really, I'm just going to pick my money up at the post office. But it's normally a nice day, payday. But then when you've been sanctioned, it's a bit of a Early, in a way. From 142, I get £76 a fortnight. But there's people out there in worse positions than me, so I count myself lucky, really, that I've got friends and family who will help me. Having family around when you're skinned can make all the difference. See these nice pavements? Cost millions of pounds. That's a bit of the um, youth club, the money that could have gone to the youth centres that they're on about shutting down. Becky's no stranger to life on a budget. She's raised four kids on her own, and her partner Jeff's an unemployed fisherman. Luckily, she has her dad, Stan, on hand to help. Basically, I've asked my dad to lend me like, the money to get my jewellery out, which was about 250 quid. So, he's not very happy. I just went in cash converters, and I told him to buy her. It's a rip-off, a big fiddle. It is a rip-off. The rich get rich and the poor get poorer. But if you have got no one left to help you, life can come unstuck pretty quickly. <laughs> Will and Lakella have got the warrant officers at their door. Will missed a court appearance for shoplifting, so they've come to take him in. Will and his girlfriend, Lakella are no strangers to drugs or the police. But in the three and a half years they've been together, Will's managed to stay out of prison. Until now.
most people stay on the right side of the law, even when they're struggling. Becky's dad, Stan, has worked all his life. But these days, he's not doing so well. I found out that he had an enlarged vein in his heart. It could, like, burst at any time. So it's a time bomb. Are we going to Liverpool for the operation? So we're waiting to wait from there. Can you pack my bag? I say to him, take about two weeks. Stan's been staying at Becky's while he waits for his op, and today they're getting the whole family together for a barbecue. What would you do, and if you woke up as God? Oh. I'd get rid of money. Get rid of everything. And I don't know how it'd work, but I'd try and make it work. Whereas everything was free. We've got fuck all, nothing. We've got a few burgers. Yeah. <laughs> we've a few got, burgers, few burgers. Do you know what? That is a load of bollocks. We've got each other, we've got family, and we've got a lot more than what other people have got. It's not all about money, is it? Have you enjoyed having Stan to stay? Yes, I have. I like Stan. He's a nice old chap. You can't beat being with family, can you? It don't cost much money, does it? To get it all get together and have a good laugh. They all say you're a long time dead, ain't you? <laughs> My knickers have shrunk in the wash. <laughs> Four teenagers, including two boys on the autistic spectrum, is a lot to cope with. And a couple of things help get Becky through. Her dad, Stan, and a very loud voice. And you're not taking the thick fucking winter coat with you when you need a jacket. What can you, what can you say? Talk to the end. I'm a bit deaf, see, so... That helps sometimes. Having teenagers under your feet is testing for any parent. But on the East Marsh, there's somewhere they can go. The Shalom Youth Centre, where Canon John Ellis is like a grandfather to a brood of hundreds. Are you that from both of us? Yeah, yeah. It's from being here so long, listening to that loud music. Cheers, cheers. John Ellis! Oh, my gosh, Danny. No. Are this place closed? What would you miss about it? Probably John. I'd cry. The best person you can ever meet. What? In your life. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot that like way. me? <laughs> at the age of 72, John knows his time at the Shalom is coming to an end. At the end of your life, which mine isn't so far away now, like, you know, one foot in the grave and that shit. Um, when you look back, you want to have done something worthwhile, you know, and this is, to me, is worthwhile. Simple as that. This is John's boards, right? And these are all members of people that's been through Shalom Youth Club in the past, and it's been going for 40 years. 40 years. I know the muscles, the muscles are on here. Um, there's some rustles on here. I know the round trees. All these children, over the years, have membership cards. Since September, another 350 kids have joined the Shalom to be watched over by John and his deputy, Michaela. As a teenager, I was a bit off the rails, and this place put me back on the rails. And yeah, I felt part of the family even at a young age, coming here. And it's that feeling of family support that can help keep you out of trouble, especially when you're young. I lost a lot of younger years because of the path I took and the road I went down. But now I'm back skating again. John left home when he was a teenager and started using heroin when he was 20. But he's cleaned up his act. These days, he keeps his mind off the drugs with a new, healthier obsession. How are you doing today? Finding? I tried to have a slip off it sometimes as well. John's still on a methadone prescription, but he's almost weaned himself off it. I'm off to a place called DIP, D-I-P, the Drug Interventions Programme. I was on about three and a half full bottles. And now I'm down to one bottle with a bike that much in the bottom. <laughs> All it is is willpower. Get it in your head and fucking do it. Nowadays, I'm more looking for opportunities to skate 
Um, that's what I kind of look for nowadays. Before, I'd have probably walked around the street looking for open windows, stereos and cars. Yeah, someone smashed his car window. Definitely a foot, because it's smashed already. It'd be easy entry. That would be a nice street to look down straight away if you was doing things. You can instantly tell, it's a smart area. The way all the lawns are kept clean. The cars, you know, they're well off inside. What, what would you be looking for? Money, to jewellery, tobacco, anything, television, the consoles, computers. Oh, really, I'd go for in an house. Um, and if you go into an house and there's got a big arrangement of stuff, I'd probably even go upstairs and take the quilt off the bed, take the quilt out of it and use the quilt cover and just fill it like Christmas, like Santa Claus himself, pop it over your back and ho, 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 and off you go. <laughs> At the time, you don't care. Before, it didn't really bother me. I didn't have no feelings, didn't have no morals. Um, in a way, you don't, you don't think about the consequences. All you think about at the time is where, where you're going to get your next hit or drugs to sort yourself out and there's no life to have, just, it's wrong. Crime and drugs often go hand in hand. And drugs have certainly played a part in Will's offending. Will and Lakella's lifestyle has cost them dearly. Two years ago, they had a baby girl who was removed at birth by social services. I can't seem to bring myself to talk about her because then it, all the, the failures that we failed her by come up and it's... It makes you want to hate yourself, it makes you want to destroy yourself, it makes you think, well... How low a person must I be if I didn't do right by my daughter? So, you know, it, I just can't. I've got no food in my kitchen. I've got nothing. So, in a way, I'm, in a way, I'm sort of glad that she's living somewhere else because I'd struggled to provide for her. Hey, baby. Got a right little family of Cora, so it's like mother, father, and baby. But they all stick together and they oh, look after uh, each other. They've come out because there's that biscuit there. You see my mother and the baby? Yeah, that's mother and baby. That's why they stick together. Oh. Cute, isn't it? Stan's emergency heart surgery is less than a week away. So he and his granddaughter, Sean, have come to pick up some last bits from his flat in Cleethorpes. This is my bachelor pad. Shaving gear, Sean. Put that away. That's Rebecca. That's my daughter. A little angel there she was. And Uncle Terry. He's a great man, he was. What would you remember about Grandad? Um, strong, brave. Loving man that gave his grandchildren whatever he wanted when they wanted it. Thank you. Yeah, she's uh, they're all good grandchildren. As I say, just uh, I do my best. That's all. I do my best. That's all you can do, isn't it? knocking last night. So I dare say that they'll be coming again sometime today. It's three days since the warrant was issued for Will's arrest, but he's still managing to avoid being caught. They'll keep coming at least once, maybe twice a day, till I've either handed myself in or they've caught me. But it's sign-on day, and if he and Lakella want to get their dole money this month, Will's going to have to leave the house and take the risk. I need one of them, you know, them um, cheesy beard disguise things with the glasses on them. <laughs> Incognito. Yeah, I can... Not me, not me. 
I'll be with Squeaky Cat, I'll watch what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not back in half an hour. If you're not back by half the hour, you've been caught. Listen, if the elbow do come while I'm out, let him in. Well, yeah, I'll let Just say that you it. fell out with me. We had a big argument and we finished. Yes. He's fucked up. Right, let him sit the house and then that way they won't come back. Yep, yeah. all right then, quick. If he takes the back streets, he'll be fine. But if he gets seen once, they'll grab him. They will grab him. And he'll go. Looking out for our loved ones is the most important thing. Especially when we don't know how long we've got together. You don't do as you're told, do you? Why? What's the matter? Lift carrying things and running for the fucking bus and running across the roads. So we've been to his flat today to find out where all his things are, where his funeral plot is. I mean, a funeral now is ridiculous, isn't it? You're talking about £4,000 now. No, 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 don't, don't, you know start, going, well, don't start going fucking extravagant. Well, I'm not it? paying four grand to get you buried. You chuck me in a wheelie bin. I will chuck you in a wheelie bin, yeah. Look, in the old days, you used to burn them, didn't they? Well, you're burning now. It's, oh, it's, it's watched Game of Thrones and he wants burning like all them people. I want to be buried either with my family, with my mum and my brother. So, well, cremation you... might be cheaper. I don't want a cremation. Well, you won't know, will you? Because you're not here, like you no, just said. No, no, no. I'm going to put the ashy in my mum and I choke and I'm going to. I want to keep you at home on my mantel I'll piece. Come back and haunt you. I hope you do. <laughs> do come back and haunt me. Ooh. <laughs> I reckon if you see a ghost walking around with some glasses on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Year after year, the Shalom Youth Centre struggles for funding. And yet John always manages to keep it open. He feels it's essential for the children of the East Marsh. There's 45% child poverty in this community. And, I mean, what can you say? It's just an absolute disgrace. A whole lot of very, very wealthy bankers turn banks into casinos and they, the wrong number came up, so they lost all their money. So what does the government do? They take it out on communities like this. So, oh, it's the welfare system. And, oh, it's this, and oh, it's that, and people have got an extra bedroom. Disgraceful. It's just, a, it's, it's evil, really. That's the only word for it. It's just pure evil. <laughs> The Shalom's busiest night is Friday night, and it's the only place to be on the East Marsh. Um, half past seven on the dot, not a minute before and not a minute after. Every Friday night is absolutely unique, unrepeatable, thank God. It depends what's happened with them during the week. That's right, because they bring all the baggage here on a Friday night, she dump said, it on top said, of this said, place. And she said, and then, and then on Facebook, Facebook at she me. said, and then and she then looked I at me, said, and I said, what are you looking at? Yeah, yeah. And then we go, off we go. Yeah. And she said, he said that, I said that you wanted to fight with me. <laughs> so you're trying to follow this chronologically, it's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> it keeps them off the streets, is the phrase that people use about what we do, but we don't keep them off the streets. You stick with them and support them all through those quite difficult years where they're sorting things out as teenagers. And hopefully at the end of it, they're going to be functioning adults. Emily! Emily! I enjoy it, you know, I enjoy, I've always enjoyed it. Getting on a train and going to some flipping office somewhere, and sitting behind a desk and shuffling a lot of papers around, then going home again. I think they're crazy. And they probably think I'm crazy, so feelings mutual. It's D-Day for John's addiction. It's his last dose of methadone. 
Would you say it's been a friend to you? Drugs? No. It's been a twat to me. So it's kind of, I suppose you could like say it's kind of a friend because it's always there permanently. You know what I mean? But it's a bad habit, it's a bad friend. It's what you want to get rid of. Get anxious. Because I'm stopping taking my meth and I'm moving out into my own flat within the next few days. Putting a bit of coffee in my bottle to get it all out because I'm on so much of a low dosage. <coughs> Probably missed half of me, half of it, so I just like put something to swirl it around properly. That's it. I'm gonna take nine more again. John's surrounded by the life he's leaving behind. Magistrate's caught. Notice the fine magistrate. Police. How many times have you been to jail? Six, seven. My hour calendar, CS. Community service. And I was so used to going three or four days a week. When I finished, I was bored. I, was, I thought to myself, why can't I just carry on going to CS? Even though I didn't get paid for it. It kept myself busy, out of the way. But sometimes, keeping yourself busy is just an excuse for putting off the inevitable. We've got one fish that bullies another one, always constantly chasing it, trying to eat its fucking fins and everything. Go on, thank you, got you. Now you're staying in the net for a bit, you little tart. Right, your fish have been told, yeah? Will's been on the run almost a week now. He's promised Le Keller he'll hand himself in. But not today. He's got too many chores he wants to finish off. Once this lot's dried, that's all your washing done, babe. Yeah. And then all we've got to do, really, is just wash and dry the pots. That's it. That's everything done for you. If you get me some of that Mr Muscle Oven stuff, you know, that glass, I'll spray it on, cos that, that, that's baked on grease. That's it. Roast potatoes, chicken nuggets, and spaghetti carbonara. Carbonara. Carbonara, whatever. That'll do. When you were growing up, the Keller, who cooked? I was in children's home and foster homes, so... I don't really like talking about it. You know, if I was in care, I wouldn't really remember none of it. You know, cos the first thing you'd think in care... Well, I'm in care cos no-one cares about me. All her life, she's been let down. And people have said, oh, I'll be there for you, you can rely on me. And then she's gone to rely on them and they've let her down. So for her, me not letting her down and her being able to rely on me is a big thing. And now because I'm going to be getting taken away from her, she's going to see it as, oh, well, that's another person that's left me. Coming off methadone, even a tiny dose can be pretty unpleasant. How are you feeling? Shit. Sure. And John's come round to his sister's house to take his mind off it. I'm not starting. I'll pass out on me. <clears throat> okay, okay, maybe. We'll get the line in. I know that. Right, and didn't that feel nice? Mm. Your back's going now, isn't it? The pain in your back. I'm fucking gone. Where Never mind go? going. <laughs> you can be proper, have a bad backache, leg ache, and the shivers. Have a tattoo, you don't have them again. No, you do it about an hour after your tattoo's finished. It starts coming back. Every time John has reduced his dose, he's added to his collection. I've got all that lot, that lot, that lot, that lot, that lot, that lot. Chest. chest, chest, middle of my chest, legs. tops of my legs, bottom of my legs. Fifteen since he's been here. Fifteen tattoos in how long? Four weeks, a month. About a month. Even though I'm a bit, a bit a lot more painful than the last one. I'm worried to support him, that's all. 
the end of the day, he's going through it. He's trying. If you don't support him, what's the point of him trying? That's all it is. A little bit of support in it, Mocha. Yeah. A lesson learnt hard is a lesson remembered. There you go. Very much. Rich or poor, life's what you make it. And sometimes, to get what you need, you have to take a risk. To be quite honest, I bet every day. If I've got the money, just lucky 15s. I don't put a lot on. Are you a lucky man, sir? I can't be, can I? I'm going to the hospital for an upper heart operation, so I wouldn't call that lucky, would you? But if I don't have the operation done, I just drop down dead. If this operation is a success, and they get another 10 more years, it's a big bonus, isn't it? 10 years watching your, grand, your grandchildren grow up. When you lose someone close to you, it, it's hard to explain it, how people take it. But I think my daughter will be gutted, my grandchildren, and my granddaughter, Sharon, she'll... Uh, It's hard to explain now what I mean. I just hope the coat well. But, I don't, but after saying that, I'm going to live. I'm not going to talk about doom and gloom. I'm going to live. With God's help, I'm going to fight it and bounce back. I hope. Are you worried? Yeah. He's wrote all the kids' birthday cards out for this year. So he's like, if anything happens to me, I've wrote the birthday cards out and they're all there on the windowsill. It's only 20 past. You look smart, Sam. It's time for Stan to go. He's off to Liverpool Heart and Chest Hospital for his operation. Becky and her partner Jeff are going with him. He talks to that dog better than he talks to me. Becky's eldest son James will be keeping an eye on things while they're away. You can be a good boy while I'm in hospital. No fighting. No fighting, yeah, okay. Bite your tongue. Bite your tongue. Hi, Grandad. Bye, Grandad. Love you. <laughs> Bye, Grandad. Oh, Sam. Mm. Good luck. I hope I see this house again. Everyone needs someone to watch over them. And if we're faced with losing that someone, the world can seem a much harsher place. But standing on our own two feet is what growing up's all about. When John Ellis retires from the Shalom, Michaela will be the one left watching over the children from the East Marsh. I'm really scared about the responsibility of it. Like now, if anything goes wrong, I can <coughs> thank John. <laughs> well, I can say, well, you told me to do that. I'm a little bit worried about not having no one to tell me how to do it. But I've had that many years practice, I'm sure I'll be fine. It means everything, really, helping the kids and working here. We're young people, if you go in and you're like, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, and um, don't do this, don't do that. It's not going to work, is it? Because we all learn by what we do wrong. John's taking the next step. He's free of drugs for the first time since he was a teenager. And today, he's moving out of the Salvation Army and into his new life. Where are we? My flat. I'll show you it. Turn the light on in the house. Oh, I've not got no bulb in. 
Yeah. It's a fan, a heater. Yeah, buzzing. The lock. Skate park. See people dropping their ramps rocks. Some kid on his scooter. I like it, it's nice, isn't it? I liked it when I looked at it. Oh, I can let people in downstairs. Bing, bing. <laughs> Not today, thank you. Fuck off. All right, I'm off to go sign on. You're staying here. Bye. What are we doing? Job centre. I've been on the go since 10 this morning. 10 minutes late already. Will and Lakella are having one last night together. Will's going to hand himself in in the morning. Yeah. Right, you just think of it, right, is I'm not going to really get any fucking decent meals, right? So you're, you're, you're cooking me a nice decent meal before I have to go without a little bit. So what do you eat in prison then, Will? Chips that you could fucking knock a rhino out with. Um, the potatoes, like you're eating gravel. Um, the only, the only decent food in jail, really, that, that's of a good standard, is the chicken curry on a Saturday. It's, well, in, in, in old prison, at Eden Road. And I'm telling you now, if they stop curry day on a Saturday, I tell you what, there'd be a fucking right in that jail. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You've done well with this. You've done really well with it. Is it nice? Mm-hmm. The one and the only thing that I reckon would have made it a little bit better. A little bit more seasoning. What, salt? No. Pepper? No, some, um, bit of thyme would go well in it. Sugar, I should or have got some cheese. maybe a bit of uh, rosemary. And, and a, a bit, bit of parmesan. parmesan on top, yeah. And that, yeah. We've had, we've had a good few days together, haven't we? You know, the time we've had, we shouldn't have had, and it's been like a little blessing, sort of thing. That's what you want to be, in it, Kai, an archaeologist? Yeah. Stan went into the operating theatre 13 hours ago now, and everyone's desperate for some news. Hello? Hello. Right. Everything went all right. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They're not told you anything else? Right. These are his nails. Good. Uh, You've been crying? Well, no, I'm not yeah. Alright yeah. right, then. Yeah. Ring me in the morning, let me know what happens. Yeah. Right, love you too. Bye. Right. Bye. Right. The next two days are going to be critical, really, aren't they? Because in case of infection and stuff. <laughs> no. But I could cry now. We only cry like when we're happy, never when we're sad. Really, James, you hear that? Yeah. My granddad means a lot to me. Family is the most important thing to my granddad. It comes before everything. I don't care what you say, I'd like you, I'd like you to find a more brilliant man than my granddad. I'd pay for it. I'd, I'd pay to say that. Night, James. Night, Sean. Night, James. Night, Kai. Laundry's done, the door's fixed, the plants are watered and the fish are fed. Will can't put it off any longer. He has to hand himself in. Behave, you little fuckers. Daddy's going away. I'll write to you as soon as I can, yeah? Yes. I'll see you when I see you, babe.
Will doesn't know what his sentence will be. But one thing he's sure of, he won't be coming home soon. sinking in. <laughs> I should have been on that prison bus that's just we've just seen. I got to given a three month curfew. So all it means is basically I'm grounded. That's all it is. I've been told off by my dad and I'm grounded. And all that chasing about and all that just You seem always sad that you're not going to jail. Some ways I am. Why's that? What once you've got it into your head? sort of, you get used to the idea and then you become comfortable with the idea of going to jail. And then you sort of look forward to getting to jail, but it kept me away from the weed. I could have stopped smoking weed. I could have even stopped smoking full stop. The other 50% of me that's like, fucking yes. As if I've just walked from that. I clean took the piss out of probation and the court's just, you go on, you're grounded. Becky's been at Stan's bedside every day since the op. And while the procedure itself went okay, Stan's condition has started to go downhill. The replacement of the aorta, the replacement of the valve went fantastic. Then he got um, a really bad chest infection, pneumonia. Um, so all in all, he had to be kept sedated, then waking up, then sedated, then waking up, and then he's had a bleed of the brain. He's lost. Um, you know, movement of one side of his body. Um, they cannot remove the blood clot from the blood thing from the brain because it's too old. It, they can't. So now, basically, we've got to take it a day at a time. Stanley Valentine. That's his ring. You've just got to cherish every moment you've got. Cherish every moment you've got while the people are here. I mean, if you love them, tell them. Don't take things for granted. Pasta. Beans, I've got fucking six. 12 tins of beans. Have you stopped up? I am, Anna. And then I'm going shopping on Friday again. I'm going to buy two of everything again. I haven't got a hob yet or an oven, so I've got this. And you're done. Boil the kettle twice. Leave, it, leave the eggs in there for about five, ten minutes. Take them out and you can peel them and you've got hard boiled eggs. Yeah, so... Uh, Where did you learn that? Jail. Where I learned most stuff. I can even light a fag off a kettle if I have to. I can run my tele-electric off a light bulb. I've got a tattoo gun, rip an old stereo to bits, make a tattoo gun out of an old stereo. If it's boiled or near enough boiled, I stand up. Boiled egg. Becky's been away with Stan for the last five weeks. Things are not looking good. 
but she's come home for 24 hours to check on the kids and make sure everyone's okay. My goodness gracious me. I mean, why, why is all them pots there? Why is all them oven things there? You missed it. Of course I've missed it. <laughs> I haven't been able to shout and ball them for five weeks. Look at this. Samson, come here. Lay down. Roll over. Mm. Mummy's missed you. Yes, she had. Becky, how's Stan getting on? He can't have a cup of tea. He can't have nothing to eat. He can't talk. He's trying to write things down, and I don't understand what he's writing down. 20 years ago, you all stood toe to toe with that man, ever. Do you know what I mean? He'd have banged you all over the place, but to see him the way he is, and it's, it's just sad. I said to him, do you want to be here? He said, no. I said, do you want to go to heaven? He said, yes. You know, nobody apart from my dad. He'd have loved me anyway. He's been here for me. Can I mean? What fucking good are you? You're fucking useless. I love you. It's not fucking enough, is it? You made me cry now, haven't you? Come here. Hey, come here. Local burglarer becomes local newsman, the <laughs> newspaper boy. Wow, that's bright light, isn't it? For the 12 years he was on heroin, John lived in towns around the northeast. But now he's clean, he's come back home to be close to his family. So how many years did you two not see each other? Bloody hell. 10, 12? 10, 10, 12 years, yeah. About 10 years, didn't see each other before. What did change your life? I don't know. Nothing. Myself. Really. And a few helping words from my little sister. And a little brother. So I said to him, he wasn't coming anywhere near me or my son when he was like that. We just hated seeing him like that. Because he's an happy-go-lucky person, you know what I mean? He's out there, he'll do whatever he can for anybody else. And when he was on that, he was just dead selfish. He just, I think he was thinking more about himself instead of his family and everything. So, but we're going to sort it now, aren't we? Yeah. Not bad. Given the choice, most of us would choose to be at home, surrounded by the people we love. Seventy-three years after he was born in Great Grimsby, Stanley Valentine asked to be driven home from Liverpool so he could spend his last hours in the town of his birth. Changes people, doesn't it? It you know makes you it makes you bitter, it makes you angry, it makes you mad. Fantastic person my dad was. Still is anyway. He's up in heaven floating about somewhere, <laughs> looking down on us.
Will and Lakella may be struggling to escape their addictions, but at least they've got each other. Isn't it mad? Wow. As soon as you, you're faced with the fact that you're going to lose someone, all of a sudden it seems to become that, that, that much more precious to you, doesn't it? You know I love you anyway, don't you? There you are. Look at the lovely suds. <laughs> the suds is not a problem, is it? Okay? No. Are the suds a problem? <laughs> no, they're not, are they? The East Marsh of Grimsby may have had more than its fair share of troubled times. <laughs> but it's the way people look out for one another that makes this place what it is. I remember watching a program on wine making, and they were saying the best wine comes from the worst ground. That the vines that have to struggle and fight for every drop of water and every drop of nourishment produce the best wine. And I think that's true. I think that's true. To the people here, it will always be great Grimsby. Because wherever you are, there's no place like home.